But of course, I have to move on to more troubling news. You know, we can't kind of, you know, take this um, time to listen to the podcast and not mention the thing that's been on top of everyone's lips, the big elephant in the room, the thing that's kind of gathered everyone's attention. The thing that's really made people think, what am I going to do next? Ah, the club's opened in Kiev. (laughs) I'm joking. (laughs) obviously the conflict happening in ukraine isn't it imagine yourself that's what i opened the show with oh my god i can't go clubbing damn it kiev clubs are closed imagine that's how you open the show now i'm not talking about that but yeah the conflict happening in ukraine now at the moment is absolutely gnarly to watch from afar especially for those of us who were joking about it the other day who were sharing memes about world war three who didn't think putin would basically escalate to this level who didn't think russia would invade parts of ukraine who didn't think you know would see videos of buildings being bombed of people running for shelter in underground stations that we were all kind of a bit naive we kind of thought nah this is just another one of those kind of idle threats political just just uh jostling or whatnot uh maybe some you know some arrangements will be made towards the end deals will be signed bloody blah, blah 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 but we never thought it was going to go to a point where we were literally going to see you know planes flying really low firing missiles into buildings people running like screaming we never thought we'd get to that level and it did in a space of a couple of days so that's been pretty gnarly to see especially off the backdrop of because for the most part i judge how the world is reopening or the, the kind of the state we're in during the pandemic based on the clubs i know it's a bit dumb short-sighted really bimbo of me but again this is the interest that i have so that's why i kind of look i kind of view the world through because for the most part in most places the clubs and the hospitality industry were the first to close and they're usually the last to open so if they're opening it usually is a good sign that okay the pandemic is easing somewhat the numbers aren't as crazy um the world's going back to some sort of semblance of normality people can go and do get about their regular everyday lives blah 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 and it felt like in the last couple of weeks things were changing right you had news of places like france reopening obviously Canada's going through what they're going through but even places like Germany Berlin were starting to announce things you have places in Scandinavia Portugal you obviously here in the UK things are back to basically normal things were slowly starting to open you thought okay we're going back to some semblance of normality and with the summer coming up in February you know it just felt like there was some hope there was some light at the end of the tunnel and then bang we get hit with something else in this summer it's just and everyone's having sharing that meme at the moment of like you know what the, finally you're going to enjoy your summer and then bang here's putin come over with a flipping chair over your head to kind of throw that into disarray but i can't even imagine how it is for people who live in ukraine day to day how they're feeling right now right like legitimately think about that like you're legitimately because there was i remember reading a report something maybe it was on here i read some ra report where they kind of ask the opinions of loads of people who are involved with the, you know, um, Kiev nightlife scene or Ukraine nightlife scene in general, in terms of clubs and whatnot, and they were all basically saying a few weeks ago, hey, don't be, pan- don't panic. Everyone here is continuing life as normal. No one's really paying too much attention to this Russia stuff. They're not taking it seriously. <clears throat> There's no danger. And anyway, the best way to stand in solidarity is to continue living our everyday lives. Blah blah blah. Where's that effect? And then out of the blue, it just escalates like that. So it is a it is a real kind of, I would say, awakening or maybe wake up call for us, especially uh, those of us who live in, you know, um, Western Europe or the Western world, to kind of, kind of realize, especially when it comes to like historic points in history or historic times in history or no, um, important times in history, especially when it comes to large scale wars, where we look back on stuff like World War Two, World War One, blah blah blah. You maybe think it all kind of starts maybe in your head maybe especially with movies too the disneyfication of life whatever it may be you always think it kind of starts with a real bang like it starts off crazy and it doesn't sometimes it just starts off at the dead of night it starts off off the back of you know putin saying we're going to do a training exercise or something. Like something like those kind of what those sort of words and it's slowly but surely paratroopers are landing into the border <coughs> certain regions and whatnot are getting lit up with the missiles and whatnot like that's what it starts really it starts really kind of quiet quote unquote it's quiet maybe it it just it doesn't start off in a movie way it doesn't start off with like you know literally people like firing shots off in the air it just starts in a very methodical slow way but usually when it ramps up you know it's i remember describing to somebody earlier it's equivalent to somebody you get into a fight with somebody and then your head doesn't throw the first punch but they push you what do you do do you keep escalating with another push or do you retaliate with a hit just to kind of get your first hit in 
that's the kind of that's what it sort of feels like and it doesn't and usually those exchanges it's very rare unless you're a really mature grown-up person again it's only one-on-one -on -one. this is a whole flipping nation so it's completely different but usually in those instances if somebody puts their hands on you it can only go one way it only escalates upwards it doesn't escalate down unless you know you happen to be friends and they can hold you or whatever it usually always goes to the next level so it feels like with this you know unless ukraine flipping puts their arms down and surrenders which why would they do that um this is just going to escalate and get worse so what we're seeing is messed up especially for us living in the uk or us living in western europe especially places where we don't feel like we're connected to it whatsoever it's messed up for us to see it like this but just imagine if you're living there day to day this is like a shock to the system anyway off the back of the pandemic and then it's only going to get worse as the days and weeks progress like you know it is you just know it is um and it's just horrible it really really is um this is quickly a quick guide because of the bbc i quickly going to read over it says ukraine conflict your guide to understanding the story it says russia has launched a full-scale invasion of ukraine as the first day of the assault nears its end the enormity of what's happened could mean it's still difficult to process. Here's what it is. It says, the first explosions came in the early hours of Thursday. And I remember seeing it because I was up all night. So I was seeing some of the footage coming in via Twitter and stuff, which has been a pretty good resource. There was a really cool Twitter space that I was a part of that I was running for like 10 plus hours that these two guys were running really well. That was awesome to hear them sharing clips and, they, you know, to basically hear them basically they were running it like a TV station. It was pretty sick. They had like a, a, a TV program or news station on in the background. They would, you know, intermittently basically turn it on and let people talk who were basically on TV and you could hear it over the phone. They'd obviously share some insight, in, in, um, insightful articles or whatnot that give you understanding. Like it was really, really good. Um, that was also good. But of course, you know, seeing people lives get turned upside down on your feed in real time was a bit of a, a bit of a trip i gotta be honest um katuzi the bbc's marta shkolov Shokalo was in the capital Kiev and wrote movingly about the initial fear. She says, I dressed my 10 year old son. We had some breakfast sitting at the far windows as we could, but he was so scared he vomited. Jesus Christ. Can Ukraine resist? As the scale of the attack became clear and the Ukraine military worked to respond, many questioned whether the country were able to resist the military might of its neighbors. As our defense correspondent Jonathan Bell explains, Kiev is outgunned and outnumbered in every sense. Jesus, the attack mapped. Geography is at the heart of the story. Ukraine's position between Russia is to the east and countries such as Poland and Romania to the west means it straddles both East European and Russian spheres of influence. This is a major reason why tensions are so high. Russia has long resisted Ukraine's move towards the European Union. But geography is also key to how the invasion played out. Moscow, after all, mounted this attack via air, land and sea. In this piece, we mapped out Russia's attacks. Simple guide to the crisis. Of course, they got it there. One question, why, as fierce fire continues, the video spread and the tanks rolling into Ukraine, why exactly does what we plan to be Putin want? The big picture. John Simpson, our world affairs editor, writes that he feels like it's the end of an era. He compares it to the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, which marked the collapse of the Soviet Union and saw the global global order we've rewritten the invasion of ukraine he writes could be traced back to the collapse of the president putin's um which president putin resents bitterly allies hit back no, we don't really need to hold it but you, know, you you get the drift of that and in this article courtesy of cnbc russia's attack on ukraine has begun as the us and europe urge putin to stand down this was quite a chilling video hopefully it plays normally where basically um putin outlines his plans for the invasion he comes across like a very stern man. That's for sure, bruv. Bloody hell, he's not ramping. Let's see if the video is it him playing. Is it him talking or anything? Or is it just the whole thing? <coughs> yeah, it's got here. Russia and that is see what he announces here. I'll load the sound a little bit as well. Bear with me. There we go. Load the sound. Play it. Is Putin talking? Putin announces the decision. Кстати, сами американские политики, политологи и журналисты пишут и говорят о том, что внутри США создана в последние годы настоящая империя лжи. Трудно с этим не согласиться. Так оно и есть. Но не надо скромничать. США — это все-таки великая страна. Система they don't want to occupy Ukraine <coughs> yeah in the very same line 
in the very next line he says he warns other countries into attempting to interfere that they would face consequences they have never seen so pretty stern threat in that regard right you don't want you you don't want the tech, you don't want to occupy but then you also don't want anyone else to get involved pretty pretty mad and then there's this video too that kind of outlines some of the attacks that happened obviously there's a warning for graphic content so if you're a bit sensitive in that regard make sure you skip this but i'm going to play it down the helicopter that was a plane before firing a missile into a building crazy stuff man tanks rolling into some city in ukraine <coughs> tanks on fire I learned what a javelin was supposedly a javelin is like an anti anti-tank missile people have been using to down a lot of the tanks so that's why that's been happening um one of the most chilling videos i actually saw which i wish i unsaw <clears throat> was a video of a 14 year old girl unfortunately dying as a result of a missile being um basically exploding over her head pretty pretty wild she was basically riding a bike in some car park sort of area in circles as kids do and without realizing pew, you know, missile just comes right behind her and legitimately takes her out completely. It's super, super sad to see, man. God damn. And now, so we'll go back in. And this is a map showing, I think, loads of kind of flight paths of planes basically flying out of Ukraine. I think there was a one gnarly one that showed loads of planes basically avoiding going over Ukraine airspace, you know, in case they got shot down. So that was quite gnarly. And then I think I saw a tweet or an article or something from um, a former Roma manager, Fonseca, who happens to be in Ukraine, living there, because I think he was managing Shakhtar Donetsk for a bit, and then he got fired, but he obviously ended up um, getting in a relationship with a lady who's from Ukraine. So the answer, he basically lives there now um, on a kind of permanent basis, and he's been trying to leave. And of course, this is a football manager who's got means and the access to basically get a private plane to leave, but even he couldn't leave because I'm assuming one of the airports that were bombed by Russian troops happened to be some of the smaller ones that you would expect private planes to kind of take off from and they're obviously out of use or maybe you're not allowed to fly out from there regardless so he's basically stuck there and he was made i think he said something along the lines of oh i just hope we don't have something fall on top of us do you know what i mean like we're just gonna stay here and help if we can and hopefully nothing bad happens to us you're like jesus christos man really really bleak scenes all over but all i can offer is really thoughts and prayers really in that regard you know for anyone that's out there um definitely in my prayers in that regard um it's been tough for all of us around the world especially with the pandemic and all the, the consequences and stuff that's happened off the back of that you know people losing their jobs families being broken up you know people being relocated to different areas like crazy stuff has happened on the back of that i can only imagine how war is going to go down i can only imagine the consequences of war and how you know destructive that can be we're already seeing the numbers are crazy in terms of deaths already you know i reported already there's one little girl that i saw die literally on with my eyes on the video so i can't imagine how worse it's getting over there so again force and prayers everybody out there but um, yeah just stay uh, i'm hoping everyone is able to stay somewhat strong i've heard some really stories of people basically going to underground stations because i remember when i wanted to go to kiev and i was doing some research about going to kiev and places i went to visit i remember seeing a i think an underground station that might be one of the 
deepest stations in Europe or something. So they've got a lot of really nice underground stations, which make it a good place to kind of go and seek shelter if there is going to be wild scale bombing or whatnot. I'm not sure again how safe that is to be underground when that stuff happens, but I guess what else can you be? You know, you basically hope to be underground with rations and then in the hope someone can find you and you can come out instead of being overground, I'm assuming in that regard. So that's one thing. I'm seeing people sharing you know, uh, private chats and telegrams or whatnot where they're sharing locations of other safe houses and resources and what there's people have mobilized in a really good way, as per usual. I think humanity always does that. Whenever you doubt humanity, you know, put like a real crisis in front of them, and usually people come up trumps. And I think usually, from what I've seen with the global, you know, with the way the world is basically global especially with social media people are basically taking it within themselves to kind of stand up and do what they can to help the people over there um so far the latest from what i've read courtesy of this lady called joyce Karam, who is what she's a reporter i'm assuming it's her name she's a senior correspondent at the national news she says as follows ukraine calls for general mobilization Zelensky, who is a um Prime Minister, President of Ukraine says Russians have entered Kiev, which already is a danger, a big, big red flag, especially considering, you know, what could happen if they do infiltrate Kiev and basically start an uprising there. On that regard, that can be crazy. Um, Kiev bombardment in, in imminent. Uh, people shouting in train stations, as I mentioned. Ukraine says, Ukraine says destroyed 30 Russian tanks and six helicopters, which is good, I guess, in some regard of a defense. 137 Ukrainians are dead already. I'm not sure if that includes soldiers or if it's all soldiers and civilians, but crazy number just in a day or in a day and a half. 100,000 displaced says so far by the UN. People have basically left their homes and gone to seek shelter elsewhere. Protests in Russia are taking place, which is good to see. People standing up in St. Petersburg, which is, again, risky as hell. You can imagine protesting against a war that Putin personally started himself in St. Petersburg is gutsy and ballsy as hell, but big up everyone that is doing it. And of course, sanctions to come. So crazy, all things in, uh, involved. And again, force and prayers out to everybody out there, basically affected by, I can only imagine what you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis, man. I really can only 